reviewing a cheap alternative for benchtop power supplies today on Mikey's Lab. And welcome back to the lab. If this is your first time joining us, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below to ensure that you get all the updates on science, DIY, engineering, making, technology, and now Mini Myth Mondays that we put together for you every week. Today we're looking at one of the core elements that is found in a DIY or maker's lab, and that's a bench top power supply. For the most part, these can be the most expensive thing that is purchased for your maker's kit. Um, if you're just starting out, though, the, the $2,000, the $500, hell, even $200 for decent power supplies can be a little out of reach for most people. So today we're looking at something that I picked up on eBay and doing a quick review that takes an ATX power supply and turns it into a bench power supply. Now I know, there are lots of tutorials out there on how to turn an ATX power supply into a bench power supply. But for me, there's one huge problem with these, and that's that they involve you opening up the power supply and exposing yourself to mains voltage. And I just can't, in good conscience, recommend that somebody who doesn't really know how to deal with electricity do that with an ATX power supply. So that's where this little guy here comes in. This little guy here is it's called Bench Top Power. Uh, again, I found it on eBay for like ten dollars. Um, what it does is it takes your standard connector in, right? Your standard connector for your ATX power supply in, right? It connects the power sense line to this power switch. So if you turn on the power switch, I don't know if you can hear it. It's kind of quiet in here. But the, the ATX power supply this is plugged into turns on. Right, you get this blue LED up over here. Right, and that, uh, that allows current to flow into these posts. These posts give you uh, a few different options for power. They give you the negative 12 volts. They give you the positive 12 volts. They give you the positive 5 volts and the positive 3.3 volts that normally come out of an ATX power supply. Uh, for the most part, these are the main voltages you're going to need in making. So uh, we're going to dive down to the bench real quick here, and we're going to take a look at some of the features that are on this, uh, some of the safety things that are here that are not part of your normal ATX power supply kit, uh, and we're going to take a look at whether or not I believe this is, this is worth the $10 that it cost me. All right, so uh, here we are at the bench. Okay, the first thing you're going to notice is that uh, this looks like a direct ripoff of one of the products that SparkFun puts out. And for the most part, it is a direct ripoff of one of the products that SparkFun puts out. Good to know. Uh, SparkFun, if you're not uh, familiar with it, check it out, sparkfun.com. Uh, it's a great place to get parts for DIY stuff. Their prices are a little on the high side. Uh, they ship from the U.S., so you do get the fast shipping, uh, and their QC is much better than uh, than our friends from the Far East, let's say. So you know that it's going to work. They make all the little bits and pieces that you can assemble together to complete a project quickly. I have used them many, many times in the past and do definitely recommend the company. So as I said, with this board you have uh, your ATX power supply. This is the motherboard connector that, nor uh, the connector that normally plugs into the motherboard and feeds it the power rails. Right, those come into separate fuses for each of the voltages that this provides. The negative 12, the 12, the 5, and the 3.3 volt rails, which are broken out into banana plugs. Okay, they are also, if you look at the bottom, broken out into a couple of screw terminals. Which is really handy because I use mostly 12 volts all the time. For, for what I work with. Uh, if you watched the video on creating the power adapter for the CN160 lights that I have around me right now, uh, you know that I used this there. I took uh, just a JST connector and used the post terminals on the bottom here to screw it down in there because one of the big things that I found that I did not like about this 
I expected that when you unscrewed these little posts here, that there would be a hole to feed the wire through to trap the wire in when you screw it back down. There is not. Of course, you can wrap the wire around the, the outside and screw it down that way, or plug banana connectors directly into the top, and that will work too. Um, it's just, it, it's a minor detail. I know, I'm being nitpicky, but you know what? It would have been so much easier for them to provide banana plugs that had that hole in it, so that I could just feed the cable straight through. That's that's almost the entirety of this device, to be honest, right? Literally, it off-puts all of the powering of this device to the to the ATX power supply itself. Now, two of the quick cons that are that are obvious right from the beginning that everybody should be able to pick up on is that this does not have adjustable power output, and this does not have current limiting in it. It does have uh, short circuit protection in that the ATX power supply that's powering it has the ATX protection in it. So you will gain that. Uh, if you were going to do, if you're going to modify an ATX power supply to be your benchtop power supply, I would say that this is a better alternative than doing that. Um, for ten dollars, not having to mess around with mains voltage is pretty good. Uh, however, I would recommend that you take the, the $70 if you have it, $100, $200, whatever is available in your budget, and buy an actual power supply, a benchtop power supply that has a voltage, a, a variable voltage output, and a, a current limiting output as well. So that should definitely be the next step. But for quick and dirty power that you're working on, whether you want 5 volts for your breadboard experiment, 12 volts for battery replacement experiment, 3.3 volts for working with uh, Arduino, uh, low power Arduinos and IoT devices, this will definitely cut it for you. I will leave a link to this in the description down below. Uh, we will do a full review on uh, several of the cheap power supplies. I'm going to be ordering a bunch of them, uh, including several kits. Now, just a precursor to what's coming up, uh, once we hit the 300 subscriber mark, I'm looking at doing our first channel giveaway, and our first channel giveaway is going to be several power supply kits of whichever one I find to be the best. So stay tuned, stay subscribed to hear more about that. It should be coming up soon. We're, we're closing in quickly. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to that. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, Tell me why in the comments down below. Don't forget to share and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date on all the news from the lab. Thank you once again for joining me and I will see you next time.